In today's van build video, everything I touched seemed to go wrong. Please say this comes off. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Right, I'm just taking a deep breath because my hole is also too high, which I've just drilled. So I called in the professionals and waited for a couple of Scouser friends to head down and help me for the next three days on the van conversion. I'm not a professional, but we built a fair few vans. It's going to be a week of abuse. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. I think I can handle it. I might come out crying. Well, this is a great start to the morning. I was going to Wix to pick up some wood, but my fuel light came on, so I needed to top up on some petrol, or should I say, diesel. Yep, I hate to say it, I put in 50 pounds, 35 liters of unleaded petrol in my dad's diesel Jeep. Ah, <sighs> what a nightmare. So we are now back at the workshop, back with the van. I've gone to Wix, picked up four sheets of nine millimeter ply, eight two by two battens. Neil and Emma should be here in an hour. However, before they arrive, there's one job that I want to get done. Well, try and get done before they arrive, which is to install a 240 outlet socket on the outside of the van, which I think is somewhere here. That should do the job. Oh God, okay, I'm gonna move it down slightly. I'm rushing this, don't rush wheel butt. Please say this comes off. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Where's my detail when I need it? I don't know why I'm feeling frantic and stressing and trying to rush. Probably the disaster of this morning and realizing I wasted over 250 pounds. If White Spirit doesn't get this off, what will? Let's see where that's come out. Right, I'm just taking a deep breath. Because my hole is also too high, which I've just drilled. You probably can't see too well, but here's the hole that I just drilled straight through. I thought it was gonna come out down here. If anybody else ever gets like this, stressed, overwhelmed, frantic, hectic, try to rush things and not do things properly, which really isn't in my nature. I really like to do things properly. I know it doesn't always come across like that, but deep breaths we're just gonna sit tight and wait for Neil and Emma to arrive otherwise I know the current frame of mind and the mood that I'm in right now I'm just gonna end up cocking things up fuck me just relax we'll just bloody relax right as you can see the Scousers have arrived Neil and Emma have come all the way down from Nothing's Liverpool. Been stolen. <laughs> Nothing's been stolen. Nothing's been stolen. And they're not mucking about, they're going straight onto it. I'm getting a bit of abuse because my permanent marker won't come off. And I've just found a bottle of teacup. Any good? Oh, it's um. It's like a paste. Yeah, I don't know whether it's been. I think this one's from the Titanic. Maybe don't use permanent marker on the outside of your van. Yeah, or get some tea cut from the <laughs> the, the later centuries. We're putting the ply on the back so the screws actually have something to bite into and also it gives it a lot more strength on the inside of the van and if it's good enough for Greg, it's good enough for Will. <laughs> Job one <laughs> is done. It's gonna be a week of abuse. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine, I think I can handle it. I might come out crying. Don't touch that, that's a good job, isn't it? But it isn't, it is now, it's fixed. <laughs> but my cupboard should come out that far, shouldn't it? Oh my Christ almighty. Before everybody goes nuts in the comments about what Neil's just done, ruined 
my masterpiece of the sliding door. People go absolutely crazy about moisture in vans. Um, moisture is a natural kind of thing. The only way you can stop moisture in any vehicle or any building is make the inside temperature exactly the same as the outside temperature. Prime example about vapor barriers and condensation and blah 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 we need to tackle the problem we've just taken will's masterpiece vapor barrier off <laughs> and underneath it i don't know if you can see this but this is um moisture this liquid could be classed as vapor so the vapor barrier didn't do an absolute thing so don't go mad with vapor barrier and stuff like that put it in essential areas the doors that open that are out to the outside elements don't go crazy these videos are going to be different a bit more informational advice because it's not going to be me cutting holes in wrong places so hopefully it'll be a mix of everything a few cock-ups a few mistakes because i'm still going to be doing some stuff and then a bit of actual advice from neil i'm not a professional but we've built a fair few vans we've never gone wrong there is certain things you do certain things you don't do no one is a professional we just make it look good and if it works it works we're just figuring out the layout and how things are going to work and let me tell you even putting a few pieces of wood in here has made the space feel so much smaller we've got the toilet out we've just got some scrap bits of ply just to kind of work out and measure up how things are going to look we've got batten running here because I want to put a storage unit here. I've got the hob out just to kind of see how that's all going to look and work. And we're just kind of coming up with the plan of action for the next few days. He's vanished again. Do it. Where's he gone? I don't know. He's gone. But we're gonna put his door cards up. Seeing he's not here, I don't know where he's gone. It's always going missing. Door cards are done. Trimmed out. Templates. Just need to go up on the van now. Seven PM. A severe lack of filming and talking and explaining has been done today, but that's because a lot of graft has been done. This is Neil's to-do list. Three things have been ticked off: slide door cards, top and bottom done. All electrical cables are in. Remove the bed done. Ply the sides. I think that's the next job. So what we've done this morning was a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. I had to run in a load more cables for the power sockets for the USBs. The 240 volt socket external is also in. The 240 volt socket for the kitchen is in. And another one is also in down there. Me and Emma have spent most of the day trying to make this place look like a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> but it's getting there. And Neil, what a bloody job he's done on the back doors and also on the side doors. Close her up, Neil. Look at that, look at the difference that makes. 
and also on the sliding door as well. I'm actually going to sleep in the van tonight, I think, just to save driving home. And then we can have an early start tomorrow. Well, early ish. Yeah, 7 a.m. It's 7 o'clock now, 7 p.m. How many more hours have we got tonight? We'll do another three. Another three hours. We should. Well, I say we should, maybe Neil should. We're going to start plying out the sides, I think. I think that's going to be the next job. And actually get the wood on the walls and things all boarded over. This one plied out, this part carpeters, then that side plied out on all your electrics, at least screwed onto the actual ply board. That's if Poppy leaves us alone with the ball. <laughs> we got some little helpers. Right, more time lapses inbound for the next three hours of work before we call it an end to day one. What do you reckon, Dolly? <laughs> Dolly. <laughs> sides we had no templates it was an absolute nightmare trying to get sides built for this because they're all over the place and um, meanwhile Will's put a bit of tape up look at that that is absolutely sensational we'll ignore that because Emma's remind me I need to finish that so now we've just got to take these two off because they're not fixed and we got a valve trim them it's not fixed I'll smash your face. <laughs> He's done a beautiful job on that. A lot of patience this man has. Template things, take it in, take it out, cut again. But already that's looking a million times better. And we need all, to all your electrics one. are going to be going on. These are going to be Velshams, the same as the wheel arch. So you'll all blend in nice. And you'll have a nice clean garage. Because we know you like clean. I do like clean. Yes. Clean as the way forwards. I've added some Reflectix to the top of this. If you're wondering, by the way, why we're taping and putting Reflectix over all of this, it's because underneath all of this is holes. And it just adds another layer to stop you from putting your fingers through it by accident. <laughs> a.m. in the morning and he's wanting me to do an electrical system like right now because he can't wait I haven't got to watch him it's 2 a.m. in the morning <laughs> actually I want him to explain all of this to me one so I can learn it and also reiterate it all to you because I haven't got a f clue about any of this Orion DC to DC charger, probably the best on the market. It puts the power of your alternator into your batteries that your van will live off. So your leisure batteries, whatever they want. It's quite a hefty chunk of money to buy, but they are the best out there. People buy the small ones, get a proper one. If you want to keep your batteries charged up, invest in a good MPPT. Which that's actually, not an MPPT. That's a DC to DC charger. <laughs> That's it's how, a, it's that's a bit late now, how isn't it? Is. Yeah. That's the MPPT. MPPT charger basically converts your solar energy into power so your batteries can again have power in this great British sunshine we find ourselves getting. But the MPPT draws in more power from dull days rather than the cheap ones you get off eBay for 14, 15 pounds. Get an MPPT. Um, I can't remember the name of the other one. The other type of solar controller that you can get is a PWM, but they are less, about 30% less efficient than an MPPT. There you go. You heard it from the masters themselves. And I only remembered because I researched them for our van. An MPPT, an MPPT 
will in the conditions that we are in in the UK an MPPT will it will draw in more solar energy on dull cloudy days which welcome to England we get a lot of fuse bores buy a decent fuse board as well give your fuse board if you've got five things in your van if you got set of lights a USB a cigarette lighter charger a fridge have every single item independently fused because every single item will have a different fuse rating a different fuse load invest in a decent one buy cheap your van could go on fire so again invest in a decent fuse board that you can link things to to keep you safe next is breakers you're going to need breakers for your solar you're going to need a breaker for your dc to dc charger you're going to need a breaker for basically anything that's pulling off a large amperage that you need to put an extra breaker on it to be extra safe because Again, a breaker will go before things go on fire. A breaker will go before things go bang. Exactly the same as your house. So, this is basically a small version of what you've got in your house. It's got three sockets on it. Again, it's that late. I can't even remember what it's called. Consumer unit. That's the one. Coming from the electrician. <laughs> um, a consumer unit, which will basically go from your plug-in from the van so you plug onto a campsite that will then send the power to the consumer unit so as you can see that will send the power to the consumer unit and then from the consumer unit you can go to your fridge to sockets to whatever else you want on 240 mains hooker will wants his fridge and two sockets we're putting two sockets on two separate fuses for safety and then last but not least an isolator switch. Battery isolator switch. Two points to Will. Two points. Um, get yourself a battery isolator switch for the reason that you can twist that knob, everything is off in the van. There's nothing in the van which is live. Will has got a few other goodies as well. So this is a shunt. And what this will do is, this shunt normally connects to the the Victron BMV unit which is a small round thing you've seen them in loads of people's videos um, if you are a little bit of a diva if you are somebody who likes to you know <laughs> make themselves look a bit more fancy than they are then rather than the normal round dial you can go for a touchscreen unit like some people have but not all of us have it because you know it's just will isn't it you know? <laughs> he's fancy he's just that, that i mean <laughs> i love it i've got all this and i don't even know what that, any of it does <laughs> well but you don't actually need this no i know you don't for yeah, your yeah. van it's too it's your van's too small for this yeah but we'll <laughs> chuck it in anyway just to be fancy yeah there is yeah. a i mean it could mess around with a canvas hey do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth you could mess around with the vehicle's canvas system and you could, you could find yourself just the vehicle could be dead so i'll i mean nah, we'll, we'll leave off. that for another time crafters they work fine with don't know about yours are you trying to say you want one of them are you, no. do you want it no because <laughs> i think if i was to go and fit one of these now into our van emma would kill me because i've been told no more electrics these guys are the gadget kings oh, as you can see he claims he doesn't know his stuff, but he really does. Hey Siri, turn the outside oh, lights on. Perform scene, turn outside lights on successfully. Their entire van is pretty much controlled by Alexa and their phone. Hey Siri, turn the outside lights off. Okay, done. Perform scene, turn side lights off successful. It just makes sense. Okay. All of these electrical components and products I picked up from an awesome company called 12 Volt Planet. There's a 5% discount code in the video description so you can check them out below. Stove camping. And sleeping in the van tonight, in the workshop. Not sure I can really classify this as a stealth camp. So we decided to call it a day after 
day one on the van build with Neil and Emma helping out. We'll crack on with the electrical system and the electrical design tomorrow. Currently, it's 11.24, so 11.30 at night. We started at 10 o'clock this morning, so we've been going for what, 12 plus hours, but it's been a good day and it feels like some progress has actually been made. I'm only sleeping in the van tonight because to be honest with you, I can't be bothered to drive half an hour back home and it means tomorrow I can start nice and early and we can crack on with a lot of jobs. I'll give you a quick run through of some of the jobs that we've done through today. I know I've not done a lot of talking and explaining. It's because I'm trying to utilize Emma and Neil being here and you know, trying to get as much done as I possibly can. So in this video and the next few videos is probably gonna be a lot more time lapses and I'll probably do some voiceover as well just to explain the things we're doing so I can actually give you guys some half decent information. And as you can tell, Neil and Emma, they actually really do know their stuff, especially when it comes to the electrical side of things and what a bloody amazing job that they've done so far. The back doors are plied and vel trimmed. Also, both wheel arches are plied and also vel trimmed. We just need to vel trim or carpet uh, this wheel arch. The sliding door is also done. This morning, my job was to run in a load of power cables, which took quite a long time to be honest because I just hadn't planned or done any of the power cables, but now that's all in place. We've got two 40 volt sockets scattered all around. We've got USBs as well. We installed a switch so that when this is all powered on and working, my Wi-Fi will be on a switch so I can turn it on and off when I'm not using it or when I'm going away for a few days, I can switch it off. Above the sliding door and on this pillar and also on this pillar has been kind of insulated and semi vapor barriered with some reflectix and some aluminium foil. Tomorrow should be a good day full of hopefully adding some ply on the walls, framing out the bed, framing out the windows. So tomorrow is gonna be another full on day. But honestly, I am so, so grateful that these two are down here helping me because it has sped up the process so much we're all doing individual jobs i'm learning a few things as i go by pinging neil and emma with a million questions but that is the only way to learn just by asking questions even if they're stupid i ask them anyway but as i said this is the progress of a full day one because the previous day was kind of just planning and setting a few things out do me a favor if you're not subscribed to neil and emma please go and head over to their channel urban van life and make sure you hit the subscribe button and give them loads of love because they've driven all the way down from liverpool just to help me push this van along and hopefully get it converted. We've got another three days until Friday to get as much work done as we possibly can. And so far, so good. Things are looking good. I'm in high spirits. I'm pretty tired, I can't lie. As I said, it's half 11. Been going 12 hours yesterday, 12 hours today. And tonight, we're gonna be sleeping inside the van. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna be continuing the van build tomorrow. So keep an eye out for the next few videos coming out. Good night, arrivederci. Peace.